Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Doug Masterson and I want to start off by thanking each of you for agreeing to participate in our uh, pilot study for our Activity Insight, which is a product of digital measures. And so the purpose of the video today is to um, get you started on entering data into digital measures. I'm going to roll out this pilot uh, a little bit at a time so that um, nobody gets overwhelmed with everything. And so this first uh, phase of the rollout, what I want you uh, uh, to do is to go into the uh, the instrument activity insight and start entering in some of your some of your data that will be uh, required for you to update on a regular basis um, that only you know how to to input. Uh, usually this comes straight from your CV. So first thing we need to do is get to the uh, instrument itself. I have mine bookmarked under digital measures um, and so I will provide you all with the links that you need to get into the instrument in the email that you received the link for this video for. So if you don't know how to get back into that uh, readily just uh, go back and look in that email and all the links that you'll need are in that email. So uh, once we go to uh, the login page, the login for digital measures, or activity insight, I should say, within digital measures is uh, your SOAR credentials. So you just put in your ID number starting with a W and your SOAR login um, password. And then you can simply log in and it will take you to the, um, the instrument itself. Now my dashboard is going to look slightly different. Uh, from yours probably uh, because I'm an administrator and you all are on the user side so uh, there will be things that might look just a little bit different uh, in terms of being able to download administrator resources and that kind of thing but other than that what you're going to be seeing on my dashboard is going to be identical to what you'll see on yours if you have any issues uh, logging into the dashboard in the next couple of three days whatever uh, please uh, feel free to give me a call and I'll see if we can't get that fixed but we should have everybody who's currently teaching at USM in the system uh, with a um, with a credential, and so uh, those credentials are just based on your SOAR login uh, ID and, and uh, password. Now, when you get into uh, Activity Insight in Digital Measures, what you'll see on the uh, left-hand side here under Dashboard is manage activities, manage data, run reports, those types of things. Um, you're going to want to manage your activities. So go to manage activities and you'll notice that some things come up underneath rapid reports and pasteboard. Pasteboard is like the clipboard so this is where you can add um, a variety of things uh, from cut and paste from Word and then you can cut and paste it from there back into uh, the various panels here. Uh, and so if you want to cut and paste from your current uh, curriculum Vita, that's fine. You can use the pasteboard or you can just simply use um, the clipboard that's available in either Windows or your Macintosh system. Uh, so let's not worry too much about rapid reports right now or pasteboard. Uh, let's worry about all these panels over here where we're going to be asking you to upload information uh, that is relevant to your uh, activities. Uh, and I just want to start off by saying that um, Activity Insights is going to give you a lot of advantages in being able to generate reports for things like annual evaluations, ultimately for things like tenure and promotion, uh, uh, any kinds of biosketches that you need to generate for NSF, NIH, uh, whatever the case may be. And so Activity Insight really um, really sells this as enter your data once and use it infinitely and so I think that's going to be the case here once we get it completely up and running. I want to say, uh, state at the outset that we are uh, still tweaking some of the things that we're importing from SOAR into uh, Activity Insight and so today there's going to be some things that I'm just going to ask you not to even really worry about and I'll point those out because we're in the process of getting some data cleaned up in HR uh, that we're getting from HR, getting it cleaned up before we import it into um, uh, Activity Insight. So over here you have uh, basically uh, four panels, main panels. You've got general information, which includes all this kind of stuff. 
So if you click on general information, you can bring it up or bring it down however you want to do, just like you normally would with any other type of, of software. And you'll see that you've got things like personal and contact information, biography and expertise. The administrative data, you've got permanent data and yearly data. This stuff is completely imported from, um, from HR right now, and so we're working on that, so don't even worry about that one. Uh, you've got administrative assignments, appointments, awards and honors, consulting, education. Education, we get that directly from SOAR as well, so don't spend too much time on that. We're having to alter some stuff as how we receive it from HR uh, to get it into digital measures, and we're working on that right now, and there will be an update on that uh, as time goes on. Graduate, postgraduate training, any kind of professional uh, development activities that you've done, licensures and certificates, media appearances, professional memberships, any references, your work history, your workload information, and annual evaluation. So... Uh, let's just focus on the general information right now, and then we'll get into the teaching, research, and, and other uh, panels in a minute. But I think once you get the general idea of what's going on here, uh, you'll see that the rest of it's actually quite easy. So if you go into personal and contact information, your personal and contact information, a good bit of this is actually coming in directly from eight, uh, human resources. So what you'll see is first name, Douglas, and you'll see a little lock over here to the left. That means you cannot alter that field. This is how we are importing this directly from human resources. Now, my first name is Douglas, and my preferred name is Douglas, but I could have just as easily put Doug here as well uh, if I wanted people to think of me as preferred name Doug. And most people do call me Doug. I probably should put it there as Doug, but nonetheless, I put it in there as Douglas. And so everywhere you see these locks, you can't change any of that data. Um, however, uh, you can put all kinds of other information. Um, you can, If you have an endowed position at the university, you can type in the name of that endowed position. You can put your office location. So I'm in the International Center, room 519. Your office phone, if that should change, you can change that as well. That is, is getting imported from um, human resources, but you could put that in there um, and change that if, if for whatever reason it's changing. Uh, if you have a personal website, you can enter that there. Uh, you can put in your photograph. I added a file with my photograph, so it takes you to a place where you can open, and I'm not going to open my photograph for you, but you can, you can definitely attach files within most of the panels within Activity Insight. And then once you've made all the changes here, click Save, and you can pretty much so then exit out of this and go back to the general information. You'll want to go to your biography and expertise, and here you can enter in a brief biography, uh, whatever you want. Uh, I know a lot of people have imported this directly from their CV statements. Uh, pretty easy to do. One of the things that you'll want to be careful about as you cut and paste is you uh, keep in mind that sometimes... Um, special symbols don't transfer quite easily from uh, a cut and paste. So just keep um, keep mind of that if you, for whatever reason, happen to have uh, Greek symbols or something of that nature in your in your text uh, to make sure you go back and, and uh, verify that those were, were transferred correctly. Uh, you could put in an area of specialization. So like I could put here organic chemistry, if I can spell correctly. Uh, and I could put any number of things that I want to in that particular um, area if I want. So I'm just going to leave it at organic chemistry. Uh, your professional interests, you can put uh, what you're doing. I chose to focus on the research that I do in terms of my professional interests, but I could have added additional things. I could have put subtitles, whatever the uh, case may be. I can put other interests here if I'm really interested in people knowing what some of my personal interests are. You don't have to put anything there. It's up to you, uh, depending on what you want to share. Uh, I could have put here that I'm uh, an enthusiastic rocketeer, for example. I could have put rocketry or whatever, fisherman, whatever it is that you like to do, you can put that in these other interest areas. And then in terms of notable courses taught, uh, things that you're kind of proud of or whatever, you can, you can introduce those. And these were imported uh, directly, again, from my... A CV. I simply just cut and pasted because I have the list of courses that I've taught uh, 
and I just cut and pasted those in there. So it's pretty easy to do, uh, and you can put those in there quite easily. Uh, if you happen to be proficient in languages, you can put that here as well. So if you happen to have a uh, native or bilingual, full professional, whatever the case may be, you can enter in the language, whatever language it happens to be. Uh, if it's not listed, you can put other and then put an explanation of what other means here. Uh, you can add additional row, uh, rows Excuse me, uh, if you have multiple languages that you want to list. Here you can also uh, put any international experience that you may have. And so when you click on uh, this type, you can see you can have collaboration, government, graduate study, military, postdoctoral, whatever the case may be. And of course, you always have other and you need to provide an explanation for other. But one of the things that I did that I would like for people to know about is I had a collaborator uh, in Germany. And so Germany is the country of experience. Uh, and this was with uh, Dr. Uwe born at the University of Greifswald. Uh, and I started that collaboration in 2011, and it's ongoing. So I have not put an end date there yet. And so that's a particular international experience that I think is relevant uh, to what I'm doing here at the University of Southern Mississippi. And again, you can add as many of these as you want, as many of these as is pertinent for you to, to add. And so when you're done, you simply come up and you click Save. Let's get rid of that. Um, so you can do that again. Uh, we're going to skip this administrative data right now. I will want you to go back later after we get that updated uh, correctly from HR and do some verifications for us. Uh, but for right now, you can skip that one. Administrative assignments, uh, you can notice I've put in the various administrative assignments that I have. Uh, you, what you'll do when you come in here is you can go in and add a new item, and you can select your role. Uh, whatever the case may be, whether you were an associate or uh, associate vice president, a vice president, a dean, a director, provost, whatever the case may be, you can put that information there. You can put in your scope, whether or not it was at your department or school level, the college level, university level. You can put in a, a brief description of the responsibilities that you have, and then you can put the start and end dates there. Click Save, and you're good to go. Or you can uh, save and then add another, and it'll give you another uh, one of these panels to fill out. So you can, you can do that pretty easily. And so you can see that I have... Uh, you know, these different things uh, listed. I don't go into a whole lot of uh, detail, but start and end dates for the various things that I'm doing. I did not bother with the approximate number of hours spent per year uh, because it was a lot and uh, uh, hard to keep track of. Um, <clears throat> You can put in appointments, so things that you've been appointed to. I haven't put in any appointments for me yet, but if you would go in and add a new item for appointments, you can see that there's an appointment type. Uh, it can be an academic appointment or an administrative appointment, what the title and rank of your position was, what department it was for, and you can see that it will auto automatically pop up with the departments that we have on campus, so you can select one of those. And you can enter a brief description, start and end date, just like you did before. Uh, awards and honors. You can uh, put in uh, a variety of awards and honors that you have been given that you want people to know about, uh, things that you might want to be uh, touting for your annual evaluation or uh, tenure and promotion, whatever the case may be, or for an award that you're trying to go up for. Uh, and so I've entered in a variety of, of uh, different awards that I have uh, uh, received. Uh, but basically what you'll do when you come in is you'll uh, add a new item. You'll see that it allows you to enter in whether the award was, an anom was a nomination or something that you received. So we do want to know, were you nominated for some prestigious awards? Whether you got them or not, the nomination is, is significant. And so you can say that you were nominated for an award or you actually received the award, what the award was, uh, who sponsored it. Was it one of your uh, professional societies? Was it the University of Southern Mississippi? Was it the Department of uh, Education? Was it uh, your particular college? 
whatever the case may be. Uh, you can put in a purpose. Was it was this an award for leadership, teaching, scholarship, service to the community, uh, or other? And then of course, if you hit other, then you can certainly come in and, and put an explanation of what other was. You have scope. You know, was this something that was at the university level? Was this a college award? Was this something at the department? Was it an international recognition? So on and so forth. And then, of course, you can put a brief uh, explanation here. Now, one of the things um, that I have not done yet, but w I got them to put in this upload file. So in the awards and honors section, you may want to provide evidence that you actually uh, received that award. So, for example, if you received an award for your exemplary community service and that ended up in the newspaper, uh, you could actually uh, get a copy of that newspaper article in PDF format or whatever, and or JPEG if it's just a picture of the article, and you could go in and upload that file as evidence for your award. And so I haven't uh, done this on any of my awards yet because I'll have to actually track down all that stuff. But you know, maybe you received a plaque and you simply want to uh, upload a picture of that plaque. So you can take a nice picture with your with your phone, uh, save it as a JPEG file or whatever file you want. Choose the file and uh, put that in there. And then, of course, you can uh, enter the date that you uh, received that award. So for um, some of mine, uh, if you look at like the Don Drapeau uh, Undergraduate Mentorship Award, I received that in 2015. I should know when the date was. I believe that was in uh, June. I don't remember the exact date, so let's just say June the 5th, uh, 2015, that I was notified. I could give a brief description here if I wanted to, uh, and uh, that would be just fine. So I can save that, update my file, updates my record for me, uh, and I can do that. So again, I can go back and get a picture of the plaque that I received or the uh, award announcement that I received, whatever the case may be, and upload that in there as evidence of, of that award. So that's kind of nice. Uh, consulting, for those of you who do consulting, I don't really do much consulting at all, um, at least on a professional level. Uh, you can certainly go in and uh, uh, add all of your consulting activities. Uh, was it an academic profit or for profit, uh, government, whatever the case may be? Um, who the client or organization was, where it was located, did you get compensated for it, or was this pro bono? Um, how many hours you think you spent doing that, whatever the case may be. And then, of course, uh, your start and end date. So if it's if it's ongoing consulting, just put the start date. That'll be fine. Click save, and, and you're good to go. But again, I don't do a whole lot of consulting of, of any significance, so uh, I, don't, I don't have anything in that particular panel for me. Your education, uh, don't worry about that right now. Again, that's stuff that we're getting from... Uh, HR, and we'll, we'll cover that later once we get that all cleaned up and put into digital measures automatically. Uh, graduate, postgraduate training. Uh, you can add a new item. I haven't put anything in here yet. You can list what type of training you received. Uh, did you do an internship, a clerkship? Um, residency, other, whatever the case may be, explanation of other, the title, all the information that you want to put in, you can put in there, just like the other panels. Uh, faculty professional development activities that you've attended. Uh, so here I've attended a few uh, professional development activities. Uh, I'll cover one of these in just a moment, but basically anything that you've done that you consider professional development, you go in and add a new item, list the activity type, Maybe it was you took a, a course somewhere or you went to a conference or you got a, a, a faculty fellowship or internship of some, of some type. Uh, you attended a seminar that was particularly uh, relevant. Uh, maybe you went to one of the USM faculty development seminars or participated uh, in that program. Uh, maybe like the ACU series that Dr. Miller's been uh, putting on uh, last year and this year. So... All of those kinds of things could be put into this panel quite easily. Again, same number or same type of stuff here. Put in what you want.
if you have any licensures or cert certifications, uh, I really don't. But uh, you know, maybe you have a certified, maybe you're a certified scuba diver, and you're using that certification uh, as part of what you do in your job, and so you want people to know that you have it. So you can put all that information here. Okay, whether it's international, national, regional, state, or local types of uh, certifications, uh, the date you obtained it, when it expires, uh, is it relevant to SAC COC faculty qualifications? You would mark yes here if you were using that um, training or uh, certification um, to justify your, uh, your teaching qualifications. So, for example, maybe you are teaching a scuba diving class, for example, and, uh, you know, it's really not your graduate degree uh, that you have that's allowing you to teach that particular course. It's the fact that you're a certified scuba diver and you've got 20 years of experience. So you would want to actually list that here. You would want to say that it is relevant to SAC COC faculty qualifications, uh, and you would want to... Uh, upload a copy of that. So, for example, uh, if you have a certificate, you can scan it, uh, take a picture of it as long as it's legible, whatever the case may be, and upload it as evidence for that particular certification. So you can enter all that kind of stuff in that panel. Uh, media appearances, reviews, and interviews. Again, I don't do a whole lot of media appearances, but some of you do. Uh, some of you I know do. And so it's something that's important that uh, you might want to capture within this instrument. So uh, maybe you did something on radio, uh, and maybe it was NPR, Fresh Air, you know, whatever the case may be. Uh, and web address, you can put that in there if it's on, online where you can go back and see it. And then you can put the date at which it aired or the, it was published. So you can put in those types of things in this particular um, panel as well. Whoops. Let's stay on page. Let's, uh, well, I guess I want to leave the page. There we go. Uh, so you can put in your media appearances. Professional memberships. This is where you're going to want to put in uh, the various associations that you belong to. Uh, so you can go up here and add new. Put the name of the organization. The abbreviation of the organization, if it's relevant, what type of organization is, is it, again, international, national, regional, state, or local? Uh, you can give a description of the organization, and then you can put your start and end dates for your membership there as well. And so I've got several different um, memberships that I have. I've been a member of the American Chemical Society since 1992. Uh, I'm a member of Phi Lambda Upsilon. For some reason, this is 2014 to present. Uh, that is actually incorrect, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to change that. Uh, Phi Lambda Upsilon, it's a national, it is a honorary chemistry fraternity. Okay, and actually I joined that in 1996. So, and I have, I continue to have my uh, membership there. So I can save that, edit it, whatever the case may be, and I'm good to go. So enter in your professional memberships, those that you want to share with us. Uh, you can enter in references if you want to list uh, references. Um, I really didn't put any in for me, uh, but you can put in whoever you want as a reference. And then later, when you decide to build a Vita or a resume from the information in uh, Activity Insight, you'll be able to um, use that information to build your, to build your resume. Uh, you can put in your work history. Uh, and so I put all that in here uh, with the dates. Add a new item, go in and put in your work history. You can put in your workload information. We haven't quite figured out exactly how we're going to use this panel yet. This was one of the uh, just features that come built in with um, Activity Insight, but I suspect that once we have a better idea of, of how to use this panel, it might become more useful in the future. So I wouldn't worry too much about it now. But if you know what your um, 
you know, for a particular academic year, if you were 50% teaching, 40% research, and 10% uh, service, you could put those in there and, and uh, no problem. Uh, and then annual evaluation, this is where you can go in and actually complete stuff for your annual evaluations uh, that you have to do at the uh, beginning of, of every year, you know, for the previous year. So I just went through and played with this a little bit. Of course, 2017 is not done, so everything that I have in there is, is only half correct. Um, but you would go in and you can add new item. You could put, you put in the calendar year. You put in your overall comments on teaching and advising. Uh, you can comment on how many courses you taught, those types of things, how many students you advised, any kinds of changes you made. You can uh, have some overall comments on scholarship and research. Uh, you can have comments on your creative, artistic, and professional writings, performances, and exhibits. For example, maybe you did um, three concerts uh, during the year, and so you can comment on those three concerts that you put on during the year as support for your annual evaluation. Uh, and so you can do that. You can also put in your plans and goals for the next year. Uh, you know, I plan on publishing two papers next year and writing three grants uh, or three proposals for grants, uh, whatever the case may be. You can, you can put all that information in, in there and then use it to build through the reports, which we'll talk about in just a moment, uh, an annual evaluation report that could go to your, to your chair. So that's the general information panel. So um, why don't you go ahead, and if you, if you, if you can, and just uh, uh, stop watching the video now and go into Activity Insight and start playing with the general information. Uh, and then you can always come back and we'll pick up with the other panels. Okay, so now you're ready to get into the teaching panel. And so I'm just going to minimize this general information so it's less... Uh, distracting. Uh, and so you can see that we have teaching. And so uh, you have academic advising, directed student learning, non-credit instruction taught, scheduled teaching, teaching innovation, and curriculum development. And you won't be able to alter all of these panels. Some of this stuff will be directly imported at the end of the semester from uh, SOAR. And so we'll be able to get that information in uh, every, every semester without any problem. And just for your information, we have not uploaded uh, the spring of 17 or the summer of 17 data yet because we're still, uh, like I mentioned before, we're still working on some of that general information uh, stuff with, with HR. And so once we have that figured out, we'll be able to upload a lot of this other stuff too. But for example, you can go into academic advising and it tells me how many students have been advised and graduate students that I advised uh, during this time period. So for fall of 17, that data is there. I have uh, 12 undergraduate student advisees and I have two uh, graduate student advisees uh, this semester. And you can go in and edit that if it happens to be incorrect. Um, directed student learning, this is uh, theses and dissertations. Uh, gives you an idea of the things that, that I've worked on. Uh, you can go in and you can add a new item. Uh, you know, involvement type. You know, were you a dissertation committee chair, for example? What was the student's name, last name? What was the title of the student's work? The stage of completion. Is it a proposal? Is it in process or is it completed? Uh, you can add any comments that you might like, and then you can put in here the start date that you were the chair of that particular dissertation committee and when your service to that um, uh, was over. Non-credit instruction taught. I don't have anything for this, uh, for me personally, but you can go in and you can, uh, anything that you've done to instruct students or, or people in the field, that was non-credit bearing, you can, you can put this in here as evidence of other of of things that you're doing. So maybe you were involved in some kind of certification program, an internship, maybe you gave a guest lecture in a course, uh, maybe you did a review course that nobody earned credit for, but it was to help prepare students to be um, 
uh, more successful in whatever historically difficult course, so you did some type of review, you can put all that there, seminars, workshops, all that kind of stuff you can, you can do there. What type of audience did you have? Was it internal? Was it external? Was it both? The approximate number of attendance, was it academic or professional? You can select from a drop down there. You can put in a description and the uh, start date and the end date you can put in there uh, pretty easily. Scheduled teaching. This one's going to be real easy for you because it's going to pull this information uh, from SOAR. Like I said, we've only gone through fall of 16. We have not inputted anything yet for 17 uh, because, again, uh, just to let you know some of the issues that we were having with getting data from our database and SOAR into digital measures, we're working on that uh, again. But um, So you can go in and look at what uh, types of data are there. So, for example, in the fall of 2016, I taught medicinal chemistry, chemistry 451, section H001. If, you, if I click on that, you can see that all of these things are locked. Uh, I can't uh, really do a whole lot about that um, because that they're uh, things that are being pulled from, uh, from SOAR automatically. So it tells me the date. Uh, the course title was Medicinal Chemistry with a section. It was taught in the regular academic section, what the class number was, um, the SIP code for that particular course, the official enrollment, the number of credit hours. So go through and just kind of look at this. You can also see that it gives uh, course distributions, the overall rating of your course. Was it? And you can come in and say, you know, hey, this was a new course. I, I, I haven't taught this before. And so you can click yes, that it was a new course. Uh, preparation and you can also list if it was a new format so maybe this was the first time that a particular course was offered online so you can go in and say yeah and then you can put uh, you know yeah this time that I taught it it was a uh, a new format and then you can come down here in the comments and actually uh, put that information in uh, you can also put the syllabus for your course you can see here that I put the syllabus for this particular course in my um, in my uh, instrument here and so I can click on that and get access to that particular file so I can save the file whatever and uh, get that file back so scheduled teaching you can go in and add don't go in and add new items here there's really no need to because all this information is going to be pulled uh, from SOAR But look and see what we have in there for you, see if there's any issues that you see with it. Uh, teaching innovation and curriculum development. You can uh, put some information in there if you would like. And so uh, I put in here that I had revised an existing course, uh, my Chemistry uh, 255H, uh, Organic Chemistry 1 for Honors. Uh, in August of 2014, I started doing some uh, curricular uh, innovation, or at least uh, new things that I hadn't done in the course before. And so I put, I was revising an existing course. Uh, you could also put here that you were developing a new course, if that's the case. I put the information in, and then I put a, a description of the activity and the start date of when I was doing that. And I'm continuing to make those innovations and update those lectures and worksheets. So I did not put in a, a, an end date. So it, it's an ongoing process for me. So I, I just left that open. So that's the teaching panel. It's actually pretty straightforward and easy to do. Uh, so why don't you go ahead and, and stop watching the video now and um, go into Activity Insight and uh, look at your teaching panel and make some notes about things that you see. Are, are we capturing everything that you think we need to be capturing? Is there anything else in the panel for teaching uh, that you think needs to be there? Those types of things are going to be helpful for us uh, down the road. Okay. Let me minimize those. Uh, you can go to uh, Scholarship, Research, and Creative Activities panel. This is probably where you're actually going to be spending a lot of your time 
uh, importing stuff from your uh, from your uh, 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 curriculum vita. So um, there are several sub panels here. Uh, you have the biographical sketches for the National Institutes of Health and the National Science Foundation. I'll talk a little bit about those. Uh, contracts, fellowships, grants, and sponsored research. We're going to be pulling this data directly from uh, ORA, uh, and we're working on that right now to, to build the uh, way in which we take that information from their database and transform it to fit how digital measures needs it. Intellectual property. We'll also be getting some of that information in the future from uh, the Vice President for Research's office. Um, and so you won't be directly uploading things in there unless things are not getting captured. And so you could go in there and add a new item. Uh, so, for example, maybe you've got a copyright on a book. Uh, and you can uh, put the ID number. Um, you can uh, what type it is. If it's a patent, for example, if it's a patent, you know, what nation, uh, and all different kinds of stuff. You can put the inventors. You can do all kinds of stuff. But we're hoping to be able to uh, capture this from Chase Casper's office, who actually collects this kind of information for the university. Uh, and as you can imagine, trying to get that from yet another database uh, into digital measures has, has uh, proved uh, somewhat challenging, but uh, we should have a solution for that here in the coming weeks. Um, presentations. So any presentations that you've done, you can uh, add those in here. And again, this is largely going to be cut and paste from your CV. So the title, what type the presentation was, um, what was the conference or the meeting, who was the sponsor, what was the venue, where was it, what was the meeting type. Um, you can list um, the authors. Um, and important here, when you have presenters and authors, uh, it's also important to uh, look over here on the right, uh, if a student, what was his, her level. So if I happen to be a student presenter, uh, I would have marked this as being either an undergraduate or a graduate student. Um, and you can put here uh, however many you want to add in terms of the number of roles. What's the scope? Was it invited? Uh, were, in other words, were you uh, invited to uh, give a talk at a particular conference or did you just submit a, a typical uh, paper that got accepted. So you can either put invited or accepted. Um, was it uh, academic or non-academic? In other words, did it have to do with your research or your scholarly activity or was it something else? Was it peer-reviewed or refereed? The answer to that is either yes or no. Was it published in proceedings? Was it published elsewhere? You can cut and paste in the abstract, whatever the case may be. And again, you can actually put that presentation here if you want. So, for example, if you've got a PowerPoint uh, slideshow that you used, you can just choose the file, upload the PowerPoint, and then, of course, put the date of the presentation. So, my most recent presentation was in June uh, on choosing mentors for high school students at the Science Advocate meeting, and so I entered that information in. Uh, and so you can see how I, how I did all this. So there's my uh, title. Uh, it was an oral presentation. It was for the Science Advocate meeting. The sponsoring organization was Society for Science and the Public. It was in Washington, D.C. It was a workshop. Uh, and I was the sole author, so my name just automatically uh, is loaded in there as the first one. Um, it was national. Uh, there were people from all over the nation at this particular event. I was invited to give it. Uh, it was uh, non-academic, uh, given that it didn't deal anything with my research per se. But it did have to do with a passion of mine. Uh, was it peer-reviewed? Nope. Uh, did it get published? Nope. Uh, was it published anywhere else? Nope. Uh, I could put an abstract in there if I wish. I chose not to, but I did put a copy of my PowerPoint uh, presentation there. So I've got that nice and secured in the cloud now. I can get that anytime I want 
by going to digital measures. And then uh, the date that I gave that was on June 3rd of 2017. And so then I could save and add another or save. Or uh, in this case, I'm just going to cancel it and not make any changes. So you can add as many of those as you want. Uh, publications, the same way. Publications, though, you have a lot of different options. So I'm going to start off by assuming many of you will want to enter your publications manually. And so if you want to do that, you just go to add a new item. And you will put in the contribution type. Right? So maybe it's a journal article. That's what I, in, in my field we do most of. We don't write a lot of books or book reviews, but we do write a lot of articles. So you might do that. Or if you're in um, um, the computer sciences, you might put software, so on and so forth. Uh, you'll put the current status. Is it in preparation? Not yet submitted? Is it a working paper? Is it been submitted? Has it not been accepted? Has it been accepted? Is it published? So you can go in and change the status of uh, your publications as they can, uh, as they go. Your title, the journal name, all this kind of stuff. You can put in the acceptance rate of the journal, if important. As you know, uh, we're now asking for that kind of information in our tenure and promotion dossiers about, you know, uh, basically we're getting at what kind of quality of a, of a journal is it that this was accepted into. And so if that type of information is known, you can put it there. You can put all the information that you want. You can... Uh, enter in the authors. You can add as many authors as you need to. And again, um, if it's a student, what was his or her level? And here we have choices of graduate, undergraduate, and high school. So you can identify what types of students are working with you quite easily by using digital measures. So that's if you want to input your publications manually. And for, for many people, the number of publications that we typically get every year, just a handful. And so, you know, it's, a lot of times it's just easier to enter them in manually. But for the first time, you know, you may have a lot of publications out there that you're wanting to get into um, digital measures quite quickly. And so you can actually import from a variety of sources. Uh, and I'm not going to go through all the details. I'm going to actually put some links uh, in the email that I'm sending out to you uh, with, this, with the link to this video uh, that tell you how to do these various things. Um, uh, Digital Measures, the company that makes Activity Insight, actually has a lot of good materials out there on how to, to do these types of things. Um, and so you can import from a bib text file, or excuse me, a bib text uh, file. So for example, many of us I know use EndNote and some use Mendeley. More and more people are using Google Scholar to keep track of their, their publications. Whatever the case may be, you can actually take your information from any of these uh, resources uh, and convert them into a bib text file and then uh, upload that bib text file and it will automatically import that into your publication list. The only thing that after you you uh, upload that bib text file that you'd have to do is actually go in and verify that uh, any special symbols got transferred correctly and then go through and mark your uh, co-authors as either graduate or undergraduate or high school students, whatever the case may be. You can also uh, import from a third party. Uh, so for example, a lot of um, research that I do would actually find its way onto PubMed. And so you can uh, enter in your search criteria into PubMed. Okay, and I'm just going to go with author name, um, Masterson DS for Douglas Masterson. I can search PubMed. It will go through and do its thing. And it will find a variety of things that I have published over the years. And I can go in and I can select those. And then I can continue and ultimately get to a point where it will import that directly from PubMed. And again, the only thing that I'd want to do then is go back and verify that everything transferred correctly. Uh, but you can use PubMed quite easily to import your data. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that import uh, because all my data has actually been entered. And I don't need to update that. But again, I'm going to put some... Um, some links into some uh, for, for some materials that um, Digital Measures has put together for how you can import from a bib text file. It's a it's not complicated, but there's a few steps to it. Uh, and I know many of us are keeping our own um, 
bibliographies and things in reference managers like EndNote and Mendeley. Uh, and so you can take that data that you currently have, create your library, make it a bib text file, and directly import it. Okay, so um, you can go in and do research and creative scholarly activity in progress. Uh, so, you know, I've had a, a, a project ongoing with a collaborator uh, in Vermont on alpha methylcelenocysteine synthesis and utilization. It's ongoing. It started in May of 2015. Uh, I can go in and edit this put in a description. Uh, I need to put in, uh, there's my collaborator, Robert Hondel at the University of Vermont. Uh, he's not a student. He is actually a, a PhD at, a, at the medical school there. Um, notice here, second collaborator, I can select uh, if it would happen to be somebody that was at the University of Southern Mississippi. It's really easy. I could just go in and click. Uh, but obviously, uh, Robert is not at the University of Southern Mississippi, so I actually had to enter in his data. Uh, and, and so it's an ongoing collaboration, so I put in the start date and uh, left the end date open. At, at what time, at some point in time, we will wrap this up, and I'll put in a finish date uh, there as well. Okay, so that's pretty much so the uh, research, uh, scholarship, and creative activities panel. Uh, the one thing that I do want to talk about, especially for those of us in the um, uh, sciences and in, in the health sciences as well, there's this biographical sketch uh, panel. So you can create a biographical sketch for NIH and NSF. I'm going to click on the NSF one because that's the one that I'm most familiar with. Uh, and I actually saved an item called Doug's Test NSF Biosketch. Uh, you can add a new item if you want, but let's just look and see how this is put together. Uh, so you, you give it a label, uh, and you can go through and you can pick the various publications that you have listed already in your publications list. Um, you can put in your synergistic activities. You can select those, uh, or you can add things in. So if it's something that's already in... Um, Activity Insight, you can you can select it, but here that you know that would be something like a publication. Um, but it was an activity here, so I wanted to put I'm the American Chemical Society Project Seed Coordinator. You can add as many of those as you want. You can put all that information in and save it, and then you've got your NSF data that you need when you're ready to generate an NSF biosketch. You can do the same thing for an NIH biosketch. And again, I had, I had one that I just called test, and it asks you things a little bit differently. Uh, so for example, I needed to put in my commons username, a personal statement here, uh, and I cut and pasted that one, contributions to science, all those kinds of things. So if you're used to dealing with uh, NIH type grants, uh, I highly recommend that you go through and, and play with this a little bit, enter in some data, and you can create as many of these as you want. You can have one for... Um, each project, basically. You don't have to have just one because you may be submitting three different NIH proposals that all have slightly different biosketches, and so you can create the three different uh, files that you need for that uh, quite easily. So that pretty much so covers um, the scholarship uh, panel. You can also... Um, pause here and come back and we'll talk a little bit about the service panel. Okay, on the service panel you've got basically three uh, sub-panels, university service, professional service, and public service. Uh, so if you go under the university service, uh, you, you can enter in all the committees and things that you've done um, uh, that you might want to list in a, in a CV. And so you could go to add a new item, uh, enter in the information here. You know, was it for your department, college, or was it for your university, for the university as a whole? What was your position? Were you the chair? Were you the secretary of the committee? Whatever the case may be, uh, or just a member. Um, what was the organization? Uh, what were your responsibilities? Were you elected to this or appointed? Were you serving as ex officio? 
was there additional compensation associated with this? Um, start and end dates, those kinds of things. Now, if it's an ongoing committee that started, let's say, a year ago and you're still on it, just put the date in for a year ago and leave the end date blank. And the other panels are essentially going to be the same, um, whether it's professional or public. It's just, it's just separating them out. So you can add, uh, add these in there pretty easily uh, with no problems. It, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, so, for example, uh, I became a committee member of the American Chemical Society ACS Project Seed Committee. Uh, so I put a committee member, uh, American Chemical Society, where the uh, organization is located. I was appointed. I was not elected. I, it is national. I am not serving in an ex officio uh, manner. Was there additional compensation? No. In fact, I have to pay a little bit to be on this committee uh, because they don't cover all the costs. And then approximately how many hours per year are spent on this? You know, uh, I just took a guess at 80 uh, uh, give over an entire year, but that, that's probably kind of on the high side. And then uh, it started for me in January 2017, and I'm still a member. So uh, if I get elected again or selected again for next year, uh, I'll just keep that end date blank. But if I don't, I'll go in and I'll enter the date that I was notified that I'm no longer a member of the committee. And of course, then you can uh, input stuff that you do on a public level. And I haven't haven't put anything in for me for public, but again, it's basically the same type of information, so nothing new there. Okay, once you've gone through and you've and you've entered in all of your data, um, you can go in and you can start playing with the reports. Now, over here under Manage Activities, you will see Rapid Reports. And I want you to take a look under Rapid Reports. Um, and you can enter a report that you want to, to build uh, using uh, the data that you've input into uh, digital measures. So, for example, let's suppose I want to run an NSF biographical sketch. Okay, so I can run an NSF biographical sketch. And let's say I want to run that from a start date of January 01. 16 to December 31st of 16. I want that to come out as a Microsoft Word file. You can also have it come out as a web page or a PDF. I'd recommend you do it as a Word file because they're easier to edit. And you might want to make some slight changes in terms of uh, format or font or whatever the case may be uh, to what uh, comes out in, in the rapid reports. You can then uh, run your report on your information and it will run that report. And then I can open it with, uh, with a particular, it says open with, you know, find the, the software that will open it. Or you can just save it and, uh, and do that. But here I'm going to open it up with Word. OK. And it's going to come in. And, of course, on the Mac it's going to, jump up and down telling me that it's created a Word document for me and I can go in and I can take a look at it. And so this is my NSF biographical sketch based on the information that I provided, right? Uh, gives me my, my name, my location, my email, puts it in the right format, uh, puts my um, professional preparation, my appointments uh, at the time, my closely related products. These would be the uh, publications that I uh, picked um, uh, when I when I did that under the uh, research and scholarly activities panel, uh, synergistic activities, all that, and it gets automatically populated as an NSF biographical sketch. I can go in and then edit it and do whatever I want, and I'm ready to go. I'm ready to submit that proposal with that NSF bio sketch. So I'm going to close out of Word here. So for those of you who are doing uh, that type of research, please go in and play with the NSF biographical sketching and give us feedback. I want to make sure that we're, we're uh, this is working the way that we, it needs to be working. Uh, you can actually run an NIH. You can also run an NSF collaborators and other affiliations information. Now you have to give uh, that type of thing. And so, you, again, you can run the report. Uh, and same thing. I'm not going to actually open this one up. But you can run these reports uh, pretty easily. The other thing that you can do if you go down is you can, uh, you can actually pull a Vita. 
So you can pull a Vita from this time you can run the report and it will build a, a CV for you uh, you know in just a, in just a couple clicks. If I can find word, there we go uh, and open that up. So there it's built a, a Vita for me. Uh, and I can go through and, and edit this and, and do whatever I want to want to do with it. So it can build a, a quick Vita um, that I might need to give to my uh, chair for whatever reason. So those are the reports that uh, I'm going to want uh, you all to kind of play with. Uh, go, But play with any of them that you want that you have access to. You won't have access to all of these. Some of them are administrator level only, uh, but some, some of them you'll be able to um, generate quite easily as, as a user. So um, play with those at, uh, as well, please. Okay, I want to thank you for uh, watching the video and uh, going into the Activity Insight uh, instrument and starting to upload your information. As you upload your information into Activity Insight, please remember to avoid those areas uh, that I told you to avoid in the in the video uh, because we will be uploading files to those areas and it'll just uh, overwrite the data that you enter anyway. So there's no need of you going in and entering any of that administrative uh, or education data at this point. Uh, we're going to update that um, uh, shortly, and I'll, I'll send out another a bit of information about that at the appropriate time. Uh, and, and jot down any notes uh, that you have about how you like the instrument or uh, uh, things that you think we might ought to include uh, in this instrument. We can add additional panels if uh, you feel strongly that we're, we're missing something that you think needs to be captured in, in Activity Insight. Um, there will also be some links that I will send uh, at the end of next week for you uh, to some uh, short surveys uh, that are in uh, Qualtrics uh, that I had uh, institutional research uh, put together for me that will allow you to provide feedback on, on this uh, process of using uh, Activity Insight. We're going to use that information to go back during this uh, period of of piloting uh, this instrument and make tweaks. So your input's going to be very, very important. I, I really want to make sure we're capturing everything. So uh, as you all know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a chemist by training. I'm a scientist. And so this really was tweaked uh, after Bill Powell was finished with it. It really was tweaked by me with, with my eyes. And so if, if we're missing something uh, in other disciplines that really needs to be there, please feel free to share that with me. And I'll, I'll get in touch with the... Uh, uh, our, our liaison at uh, Digital Measures and, and see if we can't build that in. So we're, we're interested in having an instrument that you're happy with, an instrument that you're willing to use, an instrument that's going to make your life easier in terms of keeping track of all the things you do here at the university and in your professional life uh, and allow you to generate the reports that you need to generate uh, without going through all the uh, repetitive data entry and cutting and pasting from our curriculum Vita. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video um, and I hope you enjoy uh, getting in and, and playing around with uh, Activity Insight. Thank you.